Okay. It's on. It's on me. <laughs> All right. This is Cheryl Wilson with Cheryl Wilson Art, and I have one of my best friends here. We actually met in the corporate world mm -hmm. and ethics and compliance, and um, she still works full-time job mm -hmm. with the government, right? Uh, well, with an association. Okay, so she look, still goes downtown? Yeah, hour and a half each way. Okay, what I used to do. <laughs> I'm a little bit older, so I'm retired. But the reason why I wanted to um, film this today is because she got an, a very interesting product for Christmas. Christiana loves to try out some new things, products I've never heard of, so I wanted her to tell you a little bit about what she has and what inspired her to pick these out because when her project's finished, you're going to want to know what she did and where she got it, so might as well start now. Okay. So Christiana, yeah. tell us about it. So, um, several years ago, um, well, NASA or, or the government, or the, the Depart Department of Defense, um, created a product to coat the inside of telescopes to, mm -hmm. for astronomy and for a lot of other things. And they needed something to, that, to absorb the light so they could get more, um, they could get further distance and have further calarity or be able to see further for stars and things like that. Cool. And so they created this product um, called Vanta Black. And um, Vanta Black, I hope I'm remembering the name of it correctly, but what it is, it's not a pigment, but it is millions and millions and millions and millions of little tubular prisms that you fire, that you heat onto metal, mm. and it absorbs almost 100% of, of light. And so when you, for example, if you were to um, paint my face in this paint, you would not be able to see any sort of um, you wouldn't be able to see my nose if you're looking at me straight on. The only way, mm. they, it completely flattens because there's no light to reflect and to, to show distance and depth and stuff like that. If you were to see my profile, you would be able to see it, but it's the bl so much black that it, it completely mm -hmm. reduces all of, um, um, it's just an amazing, amazing to have this so like a normal black. like a golden's carbon black is not the blackest black no it's not even close to it there's actually mm -hmm. still an enormous amount of color in it and it Ooh. absorbs a lot of light so when you were to paint something you would still be able to see the relief and the the uh, movement of the the shape or whatever mm -hmm. is underneath it now then there's an artist called um, um, Amish Kapoor and he, I'm sure I'm saying it wrong, but he purchased, from what I understand, 100% um, of the rights to use this material in creating art, mm -hmm. which means that um, any, nobody is allowed to use this product to, in any sort of artistic form, which completely eliminates people's possibility, ability to use that mm -hmm. in their creative artistic you know, um, endeavors. Mm -hmm. And so it ticked off a lot of people in the, in the artist world. And one of the people um, that was really just kind of outraged by it is Stuart Simple. Now he's in Great mm -hmm. Britain and he mm -hmm. created in, in response a whole line of uh, pigments and colors and um, in, in, re in retaliation or in, in uh, reaction to Anish Kapoor uh, mm. Preventing the artist world from using his the the, the Vanta Black, um, he is not allowed to purchase these colors. So he, he, when you purchase these colors that um, Stuart Semple and you can look him up online, he has a whole line of products and he's hilarious. He's really funny. Mm. Um, uh, you have to sign something saying that you're not going to sell the product, you're not going to sell the 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 paint, you're not going to sell the product from your artistic world, from what your artistic things that you're doing, to Anish Kapoor. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so, so this black 3.0 mm -hmm. is supposed to be the blackest, mattest, um, most light absorbing black that you could purchase on the regular market. Wow. And so, um, and so it's supposed to absorb the most light. It's a super flat, super matte, ultra pigmented black okay and um 
you have to uh, prime the canvas or put another kind of black on the canvas uh, to... Uh, Let me zoom in on that, so yeah. go, go ahead and keep talking. Okay. So you have to um, um, put some regular black down, and the, so you basically, because it's, you know, you, so you don't waste all of the super black. Mm -hmm. This black right here, you put on top of a regular black, and it's supposed to be incredibly black. Anyway, um, I had been looking at it, and I had been laughing at this guy um, and all the different products and the different advertisements that he puts online because they're really funny, and the guy is just really funny. I love his personality. And so I've been talking about it for a long time. And so my husband got this for me for Christmas, which was the perfect present. And because he, because I'm going to really enjoy it. So now I'm experimenting with it and um, to see exactly what it does. So I'm using just a regular black. I'm using, I'm borrowing or using some of Cheryl's golden, very liquid, um, high flowing acrylic black. Um, I mix some of the black with, uh, this is just the regular black, with a flexible modeling paste um, is a very to give it some structure and to give it some and, and I'm just playing with it because I want to see what the black does now then my in-laws got me some ultramarine blue pigment that I want to mix with a different medium so an iridescent medium a very matte medium and maybe also with some uh, some of the modeling paste because I want to get that the um, um, the contrast between this very black and this very um, brilliant blue. Mm -hmm. So I'm just kind of playing with stuff to see what happens and I'm using just a little board to test it out and play with a smaller surface and then once I see how it reacts I'm going to use it in some of my art. Oh, that's going to be really, really unique because I've never heard of that. I've heard the story of the black is black. Uh -huh. I think I heard it from you. Yeah, like, probably. You know, we were talking about some of the other mm -hmm. um, th projects that you've done. Right. But I can't wait to see what this, um, you know, what you uh -huh. create with this. Uh -huh. It would be really interesting because I don't really, I don't know any other artists that I know that has used that in their art. No. Mm -mm. And, and you have to, I, I mean, it's, it's uh, uh, you order it online uh, from Great Britain. Mm -hmm. And because the guy, Stuart Semple, S-E-M-P-L-E, -E, I believe. Um, I'll get yeah. the link and put it down yeah, in the okay. description. Yeah. Um, uh, he sells it online. He also has the pinkest pink, oh. the sparkliest sparkly sparkle stuff. The, oh, uh, wow. He has um, a pigment that um, um, changes with heat and so that as the room gets warmer it changes to an iridescent mm -hmm. color and changes different colors. Um, uh, almost, I, I have never used it, but you, you look at the advertisements and they're really fun. So what inspired you to um, look for things like this that are different? Because I know a mm -hmm. lot of times when you tell me about your art projects, you want to do something, you know, not just a normal landscape or a normal mm -hmm. abstract. You, you, you have very limited time because you work full time. Mm -hmm. You take care of your mom. You take care of other people in your family. And you, you've, you've got grown kids, but they still, you know, come home uh -huh. periodically. You have little time, so what made you pick things oh, like this? What I, I, interest you in this? Well, I, I, um, I, I guess just reading about art, you know, reading mm -hmm. about it. Like Yves Klein, he's the mm -hmm. French artist from the 50s, and he created the International Klein Blue. While you're talking, I'm going to go get a painting with that color. Oh, okay. Keep so talking. It's an international Klein blue, and um, he worked with a um, chemist in Paris to create a medium because he found that when, when he was mixing the pigments with the mediums, they were losing some of the color. It was losing some of the natural pigment color. Mm -hmm. And um, well with that. Yeah, it does. And so he worked with um, a chemist, and it's hard, it's hard to see right there. I want the light, you can see, it's just yeah, it is. an absolutely brilliant, brilliant blue. And so he worked with a chemist for me from a trip to Paris. And um, We got so caught up on some of it, so oh, okay. let me just show it again. Sure. Okay. I don't know where we get caught off, but we we're talking about the... Yeah, so, so my son brought me some, back some of the pigment and some of the medium from Paris. Because you can only get it in one shop. Um, I'll have to look up the name of the shop. 
Um, but um, and so I played with it, and the color was just so amazing that in playing with that color, I was like, you know what? That would be fabulous with just a really light absorbing black because the color is so vivid the blue mm -hmm. is just so vivid and it's just I, I don't know even know how to describe it I mean look up some of the artwork by um, Eve Klein yeah and um, his his angel of victory is, is amazing mm -hmm. and um, I just thought you know what would be amazing with that mm -hmm. would be a really 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 black 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 and so in reading about this Vanta black and this whole story with Stuart Simple, mm -hmm. I thought it'd be really fun to play with the two colors together. So now I'm just kind of playing with them now to see how they react. So I put down the um, just a regular black, and now I have to shake up this for a long time and get it mixed up. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to apply it on top of this and see what happens. So, when you are further along with this, uh -huh. can you come back over mm -hmm. and show us what you've done mm -hmm. and, and what you've learned so we can follow you on this project? Because I think it'd be really fun to see where you take it. Because mm -hmm. it's not a normal uh, paint or a normal project that you know any, any artist I know has, has done. And I have no idea what it's going to do, so it's going to be a discovery. Well, that's what, so, yeah, that's yeah. what's fun about so, what um, abstract uh -huh. it is. You don't know where things. You are really going don't to know where you. it's going to go. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just, right now. I'm just playing with squares and textures and depth and and the color mm -hmm. and different colors, and then with the different mediums, the iridescent, the matte, the shiny, and just using the same colors mm -hmm. but playing with different luminosities mm -hmm. of it, different you know um, levels of the of the color and the texture. And you can do a lot with just without using different colors. If you just play with texture and line, and and um, you can get a lot of play in the depth of, of things. Yeah, people don't realize they think abstract is easy. They see an abstract painting, and a lot I've heard you know the comment at the studio is you know anybody or my kid could have done that, but abstract is not easy. Abstract it takes a lot of thought. Well, it takes a lot of thought. You know, it's it's a I think it's a passion that you have to have. I mean, there's a lot of people who do abstract, and I can see where they may say the painting may look simple, <laughs> but when you find an abstract, and there's Diva <coughs> saying hello, when you do an abstract painting that is, it is, it catches your eye, and people really want to look at it. Um, but, and, and I think one of the most interesting things is, is when they can't tell <coughs> what is, how a person did something, mm -hmm. the interest. So they're going to see that black. You know, people who work with black, and I love black and white and gold to my paintings, mm -hmm. are going to wonder how someone got that um, particular look with the um, the combination, the two colors you're going to put in there. And who knows, you may be adding some gold or. I, mean, I, I have no idea. To see where yeah, right now I'm just playing, you know. Um, I mean, I've got some ideas of subjects that I want to paint with it, but I, I don't. I have to see what the paint's going to do first. Right. You have yeah. to see what it's going to do if you've never used a product before. Mm -hmm. You have to. I mean, it's good to use, um, uh, you know, uh, just a little board, a smaller board, a smaller board yeah. to to see what the paint does to see so that you know what it's going how it's going to react. Yeah, well, I'm excited. I am too. And what happens, Christiane and I get together, you know, we like to get together more often than we do. Mm -hmm. um, but meeting in, in the corporate world, neither of us really knew that we both, you know, did art, you know, at our spare time when we were both working full time. Um, and it wasn't until I started, I retired and started doing art um, more full time that she, we talked about it more because when we were doing our corporate world, it's not mm -hmm. something we talked about. We talked about corporate stuff. Mm -hmm. And quite frankly, I wasn't even doing it then. I wasn't even doing art then. It was, um, it came very late. Um, you know, Majil, my husband, he's, he's very um, creative. Mm -hmm. And one Christmas, we had gone to a museum and they had a, um, at the exit of the museum, at the Corcoran, I believe, the Corcoran Gallery mm -hmm. in D.C., and at the exit they had these little postcards. I don't even remember what the exhibit was. Ooh. But um, uh, he picked up, he, he just picks up um, pencils and colors and he'll just doodle something that's absolutely fantastic. And so for Christmas we got him 
a, a, an inexpensive art set, a mm -hmm. beginner art set, and an easel and a couple of canvases. And um, he said, well, no, that's just really not what I do and what I enjoy. And so he just really wasn't interested. So in, you took it. So yeah, so I took oh. it. I made it my own. And quite frankly, oh. I had never really done mm -hmm. anything at all with art after you know grade mm -hmm. school and, and stuff like that. And I was at Michael's one day. And I must have been picking mm -hmm. up some sort of thing for some kid's project at school. I don't know. I have no idea. I just remember they had this table, and sometimes they have different art mm -hmm. classes. And there was this guy doing this um, art acrylics paint mm -hmm. class with a bunch of 12-year-olds or 10-year-olds or 9-year-olds around the table. Mm. And he said, well, do you want to, um, you know, join us? Yeah. And I, and I thought, and you know what? And you said, yes. Yes. Yes, I do. I, for once, I actually had time. For once, I didn't have something breathing down my neck. And I thought, yeah, you know what? Actually, I really do. And I sat mm -hmm. down, and I had the best time mm -hmm. with these little 10-year-old yeah. oh. kids. Because they have no filter. A lot Zero. Of times at 10, they just, they don't care. No. Nope. They don't care about making mud. Because when you make mud on a canvas, they've, like, explored, and they thought it was cool. So yeah. kids are great. They have such a great openness to really to and, the and, art. and just having spending the it was like a two or two hour class or something like that. I think it cost me like ten dollars, yeah. and I spent the afternoon, you know, um, complimenting this little girl on Aww. her butterfly, and she thought that my use of pink was very nice, oh. and <laughs> and I just had the absolute best time, and. Um, and after that, I kept on going to the class with the 10-year-olds. Oh, you did? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. And this guy, he was amazing because um, you know, I didn't know what I was doing. I had no idea. And, um, you know, we were, we were working with little canvases like this. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, I don't know what to do. And he said, it doesn't matter. You know, just do it. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, try. Just try what you're thinking. Just try. Or don't even think. Just try. Mm -hmm. And... Um, he says, you know, it doesn't. There is no mistake. Just, just do it. Mm -hmm. I mean, what, what is the, what is the repercussion? What is going to happen? Mm -hmm. Nothing bad is going to happen if you just try. And it was just so encouraging. And I think that's what with kids is great because they just jump in. They don't need the permission to try. They just jump in and do it. You put something down in front of them, and they just want to play. And that's what I think I have found a lot in my art. Playing has when I've allowed myself to freely play, that's when I've created, mm -hmm. and I've had my major breakthroughs in my um, abstract arts. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad you had that experience. I'm glad you shared that. Yeah, you know, and quite frankly, I mean, I, I know that you've had some, you know, I think we both kind of go into things oftentimes with a plan. Um, I think that a lot of time when we stop thinking, when we stop mm -hmm. just thinking about absolutely every single detail. I mean, you have a plan, you have an approach, you have uh, what you're, what you, an idea of what you're trying to do. Mm -hmm. You've got uh, a, an idea on your canvas where you want things to lie down, where you want, you know, where you want to do mm -hmm. things. But I think where you really start getting the most beautiful canvases is when you, when you get into it and you stop thinking. You know, get out of your head. You, you get, get out, out of your way. head. Yeah. You get out, you get, let, just yeah. let it go. And um, I think that was my biggest breakthrough. I took mm -hmm. um, a course with some um, ladies. It was not a painting style I normally do. Mm -hmm. But what happened, because it was not something I normally do, it was more playful, mm -hmm. I just let myself play. And I did, you know, 100 paintings, mm -hmm. uh, small paintings. And it was like a breakthrough because by the time I got to like 80 or 90, mm -hmm. I was just putting paint down and slapping it down and I was coming up I was I had fun mm -hmm. um, and it broke the mold of thinking I had to be so precious about mm -hmm. what I was painting that I created incredible little tiny paintings that now I can use that more in my art career and my art journey to build bigger and bigger and bigger to share that so thank you um, I think it's really interesting and I think that um, people will find it a very interesting thing and I'll put all the links down below mm -hmm. and the names of the people you mentioned so if people want to go and read about them and uh, learn more and especially see this 
this guy who's a funny guy. He's hilarious. <laughs> I think he's funny. I, I mean, I think he's really funny. I think he's really funny. Well, you have a good sense of humor, so I'm sure he is. <laughs> so thank you, and I hope you all enjoy this, because I thought it was a lot of fun, and um, you know, you got to come back now. <laughs> so you're, you're on tapes that you're coming back. I'll come back. <laughs>